This is Edward Brown, WNEW News. It's nine minutes past ten. Time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. Holy suffering cats, look at that. It's an enormous stone statue. One of those Indian idols, do you think? Yeah. Why on earth they want to smuggle out something like that? They can't sell that on the black market, can they? It's the size of a house. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. If I want to make sure I buy the right thing, then I look at a magazine. I look at the consumer magazine. I do a lot of price comparing before I buy. Well, if I'm thinking of buying a certain refrigerator or air conditioner, I ask around. I see what experiences people I know have had with that manufacturer. I found it best to check with my friends who have the product I want to buy. When I have to make a decision between two items, I just toss the coin. I just let my wife decide. I always buy things on Wednesday. I think that's my lucky day. <laughs> people have lots of ways to buy things. Some are good and some are not so good. But one way that really helps is to read and compare warranties just as you would price or quality. The law says on purchases of $15 or more, warranties must be available for you to see before you buy. You'll find that some are full and some are limited, so compare. A tip from the Federal Trade Commission. It's good to read warranties before you buy. And don't be bashful because it's your money. This is Richard Widmark. It's a fact. Some of us lead more exciting lives than others. But it's also a fact that a lot of us prefer it that way. For the sake of argument, we can divide ourselves into three categories. In the first are those who prefer to enjoy their adventures vicariously. For the simple fact that it's safer. How much more pleasant to relax after a hard day's work by listening to someone else's problems for a change. Let them take the risks. We'll hold our breath on the sidelines. In the second category are those who deliberately seek out risk and embrace danger. The sort who much prefer to spend an afternoon hunting sharks than sunning themselves on the beach. Well, we assume they know what they're doing. And that brings us to the third category. The person whose work takes him on a routine assignment that suddenly becomes a lot more than he bargained for. Such a person is Tom Sims, an officer in the United States Coast Guard. Oh, Tom has faced his share of dangers, braving the swift tropical storms that spring up off the coast of Florida to rescue imperiled fishermen and several harrowing encounters with smugglers and modern-day pirates. But even he was unprepared when he was summoned to his commander's office one pleasant spring afternoon for the awesome adventure that lay in store for him. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Milwaukee Deep by Percy Granger. Our stars, Barney Phillips and Tyler McVeigh. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. 
Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save 36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, chars, and jerks. Help save you some money too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! Honey, I can't sleep. Maybe you should try counting sheets. You mean sheep? No, Medley Sheets from Sears in so many great colors from light to dark. Rest easy knowing your bed looks fantastic because Medley Solids come in up to 24 colors like Indian Copper, Royal Blue, Lemon Yellow, and Jungle Green. But don't just count them. Mix and match them with Medley Pattern Sheets and Cases for a designer effect. Then dream in color tonight. Available at most larger Sears retail stores in the catalog. We're at a Coast Guard station in Pensacola, Florida. Lieutenant Thomas Sims has been summoned to his commander's office. Sir, at ease, Tom. Take a seat. Thank you, sir. Tom, you know the legend of the Flying Dutchman, don't you? The ghost ship? Mm-hmm. Condemned to sail forever without helm or steersman... Well, it's captain played a dice for his soul with the devil. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, it seems we've got a flying Dutchman of our own. A yacht was found adrift in the Atlantic near the Bahamas yesterday. Oh, I read about it in the papers this morning. Her crew had vanished. Well, certain details were kept from the press. For one thing, the boat wasn't completely abandoned. According to this report, they found one man still on board... So far, they haven't been able to determine his identity, but from his uniform, they assume he was a member of the crew. He was dead? Oh, he's very much alive, but gone completely mad. He's been in an incoherent state ever since they took him to the Naval Hospital in Miami. He keeps muttering that someone tried to chain him to a large stone, but that he hid from them. And then he lapses into a catatonic silence. They found no other survivors? No, and they're not likely to. A complete sweep has been made of the area, but as you know, that's one of the deepest parts of the Atlantic. The boat was found directly over the submarine canyon known as the Milwaukee Deep. It goes almost 30,000 feet straight down, nearly six miles. Another thing the press doesn't know is that there have been a rash of disappearances of pleasure crafts similar to this one. All yachts, all big. Vanished without a trace. This is the first one that's been found. How do you know there's a connection? I'll get to that in a moment. An attempt was made to scuttle a boat. Holes had been drilled into the hull from the inside. And the boat didn't sink because it was specially designed with a double hull. The saboteurs obviously didn't realize this and only cut through the first layer. You think it's the work of pirates? Well, that's a logical assumption up to a point. We've been chasing dope traffickers and smugglers for years who hijack boats on the open seas and use them to carry their shipments. And this boat was obviously carrying something. Its main deck was scarred and scraped and the railing on one side was broken, crushed as if by some enormous weight. The big stone that the crewman was babbling about? Possibly. But what doesn't make sense is why the boat was abandoned in the middle of the ocean. The reason you hijack a boat in the first place is to carry your cargo from one point to another. Or maybe they panicked. Or maybe they made a mid-sea transfer to another boat to escape detection. Uh, seems like a rather convoluted way to do things. Anyway, Coast Guard headquarters has asked that you be put on the case. Uh, yes, sir, but I, I don't understand. Our jurisdiction is limited. Shouldn't this be handled by the people over on the East Coast? Yes, well, this brings us back to your question about the connection between all these disappearances. We turned up a new piece of evidence just this morning. Those yachts may have ended up in the Atlantic, but they all put out from the Gulf Coast. Not only that, they all put out from the same town, Conway Beach. Yeah, I used to live there before I joined the Coast Guard. I'm aware of that. And you used to work for an old sea dog by the name of Sam Munson, Yeah, huh? yeah. He owns a wharf down there, outfits boats with crews and supplies, but 
He's not involved in this, is he? Every one of those boats was outfitted at his wharf. But Sam's a great old guy. He wouldn't be mixed up in anything crooked. You'll admit it's a coincidence. And the only lead we've got. Anyway, you're the logical choice. Uh, he doesn't know you're in the Coast Guard now, does he? No. I haven't been in touch with him in years. Good. Your orders are to leave at once. And don't go in uniform. <laughs> Anyone here? Uh, there's no need to shout, son. This ain't the Taj Mahal. Sam? Yeah, it's me. Oh, Sam, it's Tom Sims. <laughs> I'll be Tom. <laughs> Good golly, it's been a long time. <laughs> what are you doing down this here uh, neck of the woods? Well, just passing through. Had to stop in on the man who gave me my first job. <laughs> yeah. You want a soda? Well, uh, you still have black cherry? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's your favorite. Here you go. It's on the house. Old place hasn't changed a bit. No, oh, well, I, I done a few repairs. I had to, had to shore up the wharf a few years back, and I had to get it lengthened to uh, accommodate them big yachts folks toot around in now. You no longer just gas up runabouts and fishing boats, huh? No, no, no. Listen, there has been a real boom in this town since you left. <laughs> In fact, come here. I'm going to show you something. There. You see that boat there? Ain't she a dandy? The sea wind. That stink pot runs 200 feet. I am outfitting it right now. It's owned by Mr. Uh, Clarence Murphy. You ever heard of him? No, don't think so. Well, he is only one of the richest contractors in the whole state of Florida. He's worth millions. And he comes to old Sam, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, things sure do change, don't they? <laughs> you must be laying aside a nice piece of change. I can't complain. I can't complain. <laughs> so, uh, what are you doing with yourself these, uh, these days? Well, uh... Oh, Hernando. Uh, yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I've been expecting you. Excuse me, sir. Uh... Did you speak to Mr. Murphy? Uh, yes, yes, it's, it's all said. I gave you a good recommendation. He's going to take you on as his steward. And there's two more of you, right? Yes. Well, there's berths for them, too. But uh, you're only on as far as Gulf Shores. He's got his regular crew uh, waiting for him there. Oh, that is enough. We are grateful for any work we can get. Uh huh. Well, m Mr. Murphy wants to be underway first thing in the morning. Now, you tell your friends. Good. We will be on board tonight. Friend of yours? Uh, no, I, no, I, I don't know. Well, you said you recommended him to Mr. Murphy. Well, you know, uh, a friend of a friend. Uh, he's up from Veracruz or someplace like that. <clears throat> Listen, I'm about through here for the day, so why don't we go summers and uh, have a real drink and, uh, you know, talk over old times? Yeah, I think we have some things to talk about. At Sears, Mary Mushrooms coordinates brighten your kitchen with woodsy charm. Save $7 on our four-piece canister set. It's mushroom embossed ceramic ware, now just $29.99. And save $10 over our 1979 spring catalog price on Sears 10-piece porcelain on steel cookware set. Only $39.94. Lead Sears, Mary Mushroom coordinates into your kitchen soon. Sale ends May 26. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. A kiss good night, and your gift of Sears Nightwear will send Mom sweetly into dreamland this Mother's Day. They're winsome, billowy nightgowns and sprightly PJs. Or complete the appeal with a short or long dressing gown. Ruffles, spaghetti straps, prints, or solids. Just a few dreamy ways to choose Sears Nightwear. All airy nylon trico, loosely shaped for sleeping comfort. This Mother's Day, give Mom pretty nightwear from Sears. And sweet dreams. 
up on your vacation or to work this summer with Sears four-piece outfit. Wear the jacket shell and skirt or wear the jacket and shell with pants. Or choose a jacket and shell with two pair of pants. You can even wear them as separates. Now that's getting mileage out of your Sears four-piece outfit. Breezy fashion prints and sunny solids. So whatever combination you put on, you'll take off in style. From the dress department at Sears. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Sam Munson has taken Tom to a bar they once frequented, the Jilted Mermaid. Something in Tom's manner is making Sam nervous. He can't quite put his finger on it, but as he rattles on, he senses the younger man is waiting for an opening. Yeah, the new management pretty near wrecked this old bar when they took it over. Put up them awful murals. Covered everything in Naugahyde. But the drinks are still as good as ever, right? Sam, I want you to get me a berth on Mr. Murphy's yacht. A berth? Why? Oh, I miss the ocean. I'd like to get my sea legs back. I've already got him a full crew. Oh, bounce one of Hernando's pals. No, I can't do that. Oh, sure you can, Sam, for old time's sake. Look, if you want a job, maybe you can try Greg Perkins' place. You remember Greg, don't you? Who is Hernando, Sam? What do you mean? Who does he work for? For Mr. Murphy. You know what I mean. No, I don't. Now, what the heck has got into you? Sam, I'm not just passing through. I came down here for a reason. What reason? I'm with the Coast Guard. Well, what has that got to do with me? What happened to the Santa Helena, Sam? The Scuppernog, the Joyride, Mary's Folly. What happened to all those boats, Sam? Uh, I, I don't think I've ever heard of them. Well, that's strange. They all put out from your wharf and were never seen or heard from again. And two days ago, another boat you outfitted was found adrift off the Bahamas, with only one person left alive on board. <clears throat> what, uh, what did he say? Nothing. Whatever happened completely unhinged him. What is it, Sam? What have you gotten yourself into? I can't tell you, Tom. I think you have to. I mean, I just don't know. All I do know is some guys come to me up from South America somewhere, and they offered me a lot of money to put their people in the crews I was hiring. And you did it? It was a lot of money, Tom, and I ain't a youngster anymore. Didn't ask any questions? That was part of the deal. But I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know them boats was disappearing. Not till I read in the papers about the one they found. What are you going to do, Tom? I want a berth on Murphy's boat. Tom, whatever these guys are up to, they mean business. Okay, you talk to this fellow Murphy. You tell him I'm a friend of yours and I need a lift up to Gulf Shores. Tell him whatever you have to, but see that I get on that boat. Fernando? Yes, Mr. Murphy? That looks like we're safely underway. I'm going below to my quarters. Bring me a whiskey sour, would you? Yes, sir. Uh, put the drink in the high boy. I'm Tom Sims, Mr. Murphy. Oh. Oh, my hitchhiker, huh? Can I speak to you? It's important. Well, sure, what's up? I'm a lieutenant in the United States Coast Guard. Oh, really? Does that have something to do with why you're aboard my boat? I have reason to believe you're in danger. There's no time to go into details, but I think an attempt is going to be made to hijack you. Well, the sea wind is a fast stink pot, Lieutenant. But if there are pirates operating in this area, we'll keep an eye on them. Thanks for the warning. You won't be able to outrun these pirates. Why not? Because they're already on board. How do you know? Your first stop is Gulf Shores? Yes, I'm picking up some fishing buddies. And you plan to refuel there? Yes. I've just been down to your engine room. Are you aware the sea wind is carrying enough fuel to get you halfway across the Atlantic? What? But I expressly ordered only enough gas to get us to Gulf Shores. We'd better put in for the nearest port at once. They'd be on you the minute you gave orders to change course. I brought a radio with me. It's in my sea bag down in my quarters. I'll contact the Coast Guard station in Pensacola with our position and our destination, and they'll put us under surveillance. Good. Uh, yes, you do that. Oh, uh, that must be Hernando. I asked him to bring me a drink. Mr. Murphy? 
Ah, and you too, Mr. Sims. What's going on here? Don't move, either of you. Uh, oh, what do you want? What are you doing with that gun? We are taking over your boat. Come with us. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. This is Mel Blank, and voices are my business. In Warner Brother cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character... Daffy Duck. <laughs> or... Porky Pig. Or... Me, Bugs Bunny Duck. We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community, and it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books on film, records, and tapes, and you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all the, the air folks. That library. <laughs> A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Is your car equipped to handle emergencies? Well, here's a list of essential items which will enable you to better handle an emergency situation. A car jack and lug wrench should always be carried in case of a flat tire. Be sure you know how the jack operates and the correct procedure for changing a tire. Flares and reflectors provide warning to other motorists that your car is stopped, and both are essential safety items. A tow strap or chain enables a car to be pulled out of the mud or the snow. Battery jumper cables help a motorist solve a dead battery problem quickly. A small fire extinguisher can prevent a small problem from turning into a large one. But you'd better keep it in the passenger compartment where you can get to it quickly. A first aid kit can come in handy in all sorts of minor medical emergencies. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. <laughs> This cabin will be fine. Get them in here and tie them together. What are you, what are you going to do with us? Where, where are you going to take us? You will find out when we get there. Are you going to kill us? I am not going to answer any more questions, Mr. Murphy. Are these robes tight? Uh, good. Do not try to free yourselves. Esteban will be right outside the door and he will be armed. Ropes are cutting my circulation. Don't struggle. You'll only make them tighter. Maybe we can work ourselves free. Listen. We're turning. We're changing course. South. Maybe southwest. Mexico? It's enough gas. What's going to happen to us? I don't know, Mr. Murphy. Just relax. While I try to loosen the ropes. What good will that do? They've got an armed thug outside the door. I've got my eye on that porthole. My quarters are right next to this cabin. You think you can get to your radio? That's the idea. Well, these ropes are too tight. It'll take forever. Well, the one thing we've got going for us is time, Mr. Murphy. Because wherever they're taking us, I suspect it's a long way off. <laughs> been twisting us around all night long and I'm exhausted. Not to mention sore. I think I've almost got it this time. It's dawn. We've been going for nearly 24 hours. Where the heck are they taking us, I'd like to know. There. There. I think I've done it. Yes. Yes, you have. I, I, I can feel the rope loosening. Oh, the rest should be easy now. Listen. Huh? What's that? What? We're slowing down. But if we've reached our destination, there's no time to lose. Uh, there. Can you see anything out the porthole? Land? Jungle. Jungle, as far as the eye can see. That's all? Just, just jungle? No, no, wait. Boats drifting about. Look, over there. Buildings. Modern buildings. Looks like some kind of a resort. Pretty fancy place. It's enormous. Three hotels... A marina, 
All cut right out of the jungle. Where are we? I'm going to try to get to my cabin. Oh, wait, wait, look. There's a launch coming out from the marina. They'd see you. I'll have to try later. Let's get ourselves back into these ropes and make it look good. Maybe we're about to find out what's going on. Here they are, Senor Green. Good morning. And then they'll get these gentlemen some food. Si. Now, which one of you is the owner of this magnificent boat? I am. Well, my name is Guillermo Grimm. I am the man responsible for commandeering your boat. What do you want it for? We'll be loading a cargo on board this evening. What are you, a smuggler? <laughs> Not at all. I'm a businessman, a, a real estate developer. If you could look outside the porthole there, you would see some of the most beautiful real estate in the world. Where are we? The Yucatan Peninsula. Home of the ancient Mayan civilization. The jungles here have lain untouched for centuries, ever since the Mayan civilization mysteriously vanished. But now, thanks to the wonders of modern travel, a once inaccessible place such as this can be developed as a splendid resort area. Uh, perhaps you've heard of it, the Costa del Samo? You bring all your tourists here by force? <laughs> of course not. I'm sorry for the indignity and discomfort of your situation, but it was unavoidable. What are you going to do to us? As I said, the cargo will be brought on board this evening and you will leave in the morning. Is the same fate in store for us as those six other boats you pirated? Other boats? What happened to their owners? I'm afraid I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Oh, here's Hernando with some refreshment for you. Put it on the table there where they can reach it with their mouths. Si, senor. What's the cargo you're putting on board? That you will find out soon enough. Until tonight, then, enjoy your stay in the Yucatan. They're going to kill us. Quiet. Until they're gone. The Costa del Zamo. You ever heard of this place? Yes. It's a new resort. I think it just opened last year. Some associates of mine were going to come down over the winter, but they changed their minds. Oh, why? I don't remember. They didn't say much about it. Uh, let's get out of these ropes. I'm going to make another try to get my radio. What do you think they're smuggling? Drugs? Possibly. But I'm beginning to suspect it may be something else. What's that? Mayan statuary. Mm. There's an enormous black market trade in stolen artifacts. Looters have been combing these jungles for years, robbing temples, pyramids, anything they can get their hands on. Surprised there's anything left. But why steal boats to transport it? That sort of business is risky enough as it is without getting into piracy, too. I don't know. I opened my porthole to air out my quarters. I hope they didn't shut it. Here, help me, all right. Up. There. Can you reach it? Yeah. Hold on to my wrist. I think so. Got it. Is it open? Yeah. Uh, hope they haven't rifled my bag. Uh, looks okay. Radio's still there. Now to set it up. Pensacola Base One, this is Lieutenant Sims. Do you read me? Hello, Pensacola Base One, this is Lieutenant Sims. Uh, try another channel. Pensacola Base One, come in, please. Range. We're out of range. Damn it. I've got you. Right. Come 
on. Well, are they sending someone down to rescue us? No, I couldn't get through. We're too far south. We're out of range. You couldn't get through to anyone? Not even Naval Air Station at Key West? Tried every channel, nothing. We're in the middle of nowhere here. What are we going to do? Can you swim? Of course I can. Think you'll fit through that porthole? <laughs> Just about. We'll sit tight until nightfall, then swim ashore, find the road, and get to the nearest village. Here's Bob. Good. Uh, Let's make for that clump uh, of palm trees there. Anyone see us? I don't think so. Funny, this place is huge, but it looks like there's hardly anyone here. There's no one on the verandas. Hardly any lights on in the rooms. It's dinner time. Maybe they're all at dinner. Uh -huh. uh, there's the dining room. That looks pretty empty. Strange. It's like a ghost town. Those friends of yours who were going to come down, they didn't say anything at all? Well, they did mention something about rumors. Nothing specific. Just that the place didn't have a very good reputation. People were afraid to come here for, for some reason. Well, there's no road along the ocean front. Let's make our way around back. Well, we've come practically all the way around. There's the ocean again. There's nothing. There's no road out of here. Wait. I see something up ahead. Come on. Here. Some road. Not even paved. Well, it's got to be the road out of here. It's the only one. Let's go. I hope we don't get picked up by the wrong people. Once Mr. Grimm discovers we're gone, he'll have his men down this road like a flash. What was that? I don't know. Come on. I wish that moon would come out. Wonder how far the nearest town is. It's pitch black. I can't see a thing. Oh, there comes the moon now. Oh, no. What? What's happened to the road? Turns into a big clearing. Must pick up on the other side. We'd better work our way around the edge. What do you suppose they cleared this big space for? Well, maybe they're going to put up another hotel. Why inland? Why not back down on the beach with the rest of them? So what's that noise? Sounds like a plane. It is a plane. Hey, there's your answer. This is a landing strip. Look, floodlights. Quick, back into the underbrush. So, this is how the tourists get in and out. This is the wonder of modern transportation Mr. Grimm was talking about. You mean there's no road out of here, just an airfield? Look around. Places lit up like the 4th of July. You see anything that looks like a road? We've got to go through the jungle? Ah, no way. We'd never make it. The nearest town's probably 100 miles from here. What are we going to do? Once they find out we've escaped, they'll come for us. And we've no place to go. several Sears brass-plated lamps, one switched on. The finely plated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The green brass-plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass-plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. This is my first night camping with my family of five. Now I'm really glad I packed my Sears family-style tent. It's Sears' best tent, tested by Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to conquer Mount Everest. This tent stands six feet nine inches in the center and has a sewn-in 10 by 14-foot floor. It sleeps eight, plenty of room for my family, even the dog. We like the windows that can be zipped shut from the inside and this large front canopy. Sears' best family-style tent is built to be lived in, and if it's good enough for Hillary, it's good enough for my family at most larger Sears retail stores. 
Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! Richard Widmark again. And here's the concluding act of the Milwaukee Deep. The nearest town must be a hundred miles from here. Once they find out we've escaped, they'll be after us. What do we do now? I say let's go back to the resort. What? Make it easy for them? No, no, I want to find out just what's going on, what this cargo is, and what they've got in mind for us. If we know, maybe we can sabotage them. floor with the open windows. Looks like an office. There's someone in there. It's that fellow Hernando. Yeah, and Senor Grimm. Come on. So, the takeover went smoothly. There were no problems. No, Senor. Good. Now, let's go ahead with the loading, then. Eh? Is the truck ready? See. Si. Who are we taking out tonight? Chuck. Ha, my favorite. This is no time for jokes. Every day this is costing me thousands of dollars. And it's getting dangerous. They discovered that the art at sea, and if that sailor recovers his wits and is able to talk, we're all finished. Come, let's go. Sounds like they're smuggling out people. Yeah. Hey, this is strange. What is? Look at the wall beneath the window here. It's cracked. Hey, and look over here. More cracks. No wonder there's no tourists here. Wonder what caused them. Well, that's no mystery. Substandard materials. I'm in the construction business myself, and you'd be appalled what some contractors will do to cut costs. I don't know. These walls almost look as if they'd been wrenched by some gigantic force. I wonder just what it is they are taking out of the jungle. What's that? Sounds like the truck they were talking about. There it is. The headlights. It's coming this way. Get down. Yeah. What's that thing on the back? Looks like a gigantic derrick. That's a hoist. The truck is counterweighted in the front. Whatever it is they're going for must be huge. Let's follow them. The truck stopped at the edge of the jungle on the far side of the airfield. How's it going to get through? Look. There's men over there removing underbrush. They had it camouflaging another road. There they go. Come on. Holy suffering cats. Look at that. It's an enormous stone statue. One of those Indian idols, do you think? Yeah. Why on earth they want to smuggle out something like that? They can't sell that on the black market, can they? It's the size of a house. I don't know. They've got chains around it. They're ready to lift it out of the ground. What's that? What's happening? Tom, the ground's trembling. Están las cadenas en su lugar. Prende el motor. Rápido, rápido. It, it feels like an earthquake. What was that cry? It, it seemed to come from the statue itself. As if it were protesting its removal. Oh, that's nonsense. I think we have the answer to all our questions now, don't we? No, I, I don't believe it. it it's, it's not possible. The cracks in those brand new walls weren't the result of shoddy materials. The Mayans never left the Yucatan at all. Their spirits are still here, 
And Senor Grimm's bulldozing their jungles has angered their gods. That's crazy. We've seen it with our own eyes. That's what Grimm meant about losing money. He's not a smuggler. He's been taking the Indian gods out to sea to protect his enterprise. Oh, oh, what are we going to do? Where can we go? Only one place we can go. Back to the boat. Are you crazy? Grimm's not only a smuggler, he, he's worse. He's a murderer. He's going to use the sea wind to take that monstrosity out to sea. And then jettison it and us. Still, that's our only chance. Once we're in the open water and within radio range of the naval station at Key West, I can get a call through to them. What if they've already discovered we're gone? We'll have to take that risk. There's no other way. Let's go. <laughs> your hair good and dry, Mr. Murphy, or they'll know we've been out. What's left of it? That statue they'll be bringing out must be the rain god. Here they come. Get the rope. <coughs> good and Here. tight. You got it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, good evening. I've asked Hernando to see that you get some food for the final leg of your journey. Final? Your cargo is being ferried out now. If you can manage to stand and come to the porthole, you can see it in the next burst of lightning. An ominous sight, no? What is it? Chuck, the Mayan god of thunder and rain. He and his brethren have taken exception to my resort. So it has become necessary to exile them to the bottom of the sea. The Milwaukee Deep? Exactly. 30,000 feet straight down, nearly six miles. Even they cannot wreak their vengeance on me from there. It's an astonishing thing, no? The forces that exist which we cannot begin to comprehend. And what happens to us? You will remain down here until Hernando reaches the deep. And then you'll be taken up and chained to Chuck so that your bodies will not later flow to the surface. The boat will be scuttled, and none of the others rescued by a helicopter which will follow you, and you... No! No, you can't! It's daylight. There can't be much further to go. Aren't you going to try the radio? We should be close enough now. The naval station won't be too far off our starboard bow. Keep an ear on the door. Well, did you get through? The radio was gone. Gone? They must have found it. My whole sea bag was missing. What are we going to do? Listen. We're slowing down. We must be there. There's movement out there in the passageway. They're coming to chain us to the statue. Get on the other side of the door, quickly. Well, senor, it's... It's Hold him, Mr. Murphy. I'll get his pal. Got him. They're both out. Tie them up. How many more do you think there are? Can't be more than one or two. Not if they're being picked up by a chopper. Give me a Stabon's pistol. I'll go after him. All right, Hernando. In here with your pals. Mr. Murphy, you got enough rope? I've got plenty. I was able to make contact with the naval air station on the ship's radio. They're sending out planes to intercept the helicopter and an escort to meet us. Good. Let's get up on the bridge and head for home. Uh, it sure feels good to get back to the controls of my own boat. We ought to make Miami before nightfall. Can you imagine the looks we're going to get when we pull into the harbor with that monster on our deck? Open her up. Let's go. She's open all the way. But we're not moving. We must be. Look over the side. Something must be wrong with the engine. She sounds fine. Well, turn it off. Let's go down and have a look. Oh, 
Tom, look over the bow, coming toward us. It's a wave, a gigantic wave. It's headed right this way. Try starting the engine and head into it. I can't. Now it's completely dead. It won't even turn over. Grab onto something yeah. quick. Mr. Murphy, are you all right? What happened? The statue. It's gone. Wave must have carried it overboard. How could it have done that without capsizing the whole boat? I don't know. But I have a feeling... Try the engine now. It's going. The boat's moving. Tom, I think there must be something real about those Mayan gods. And that's the end of our story. The two men turned their boat toward home and shock swept into the Milwaukee deep by his fellow gods, rests in their midst in the profound calm, far from the disruptive advance of civilization. For Mother's Day, give Mom a hand. Yeah! With handy appliances from Sears. Prices have been cut on Sears' best food processor. 14-speed blender with jars, and a push-button self-cleaning broiler oven. Save money and she'll save time on ironing day with a spray steam-and-dry self-cleaning iron. So give Mom a helping hand on Mother's Day. And save at Sears. Yay! Sale ends May 26th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Here's a riddle for you women to solve. I'm one of the first things on in the morning, one of the last things off at night. With slack skirts and shorts, I look so right. Who am I? give up? I'm the shirt, the wear with anything shirt from Sears. I come in both pretty pastels and assorted prints with short sleeves and tailored styling. And I'm easy care polyester. So go with the go with anything shirt for smart spring and summer fashion by the shirt in the Mrs. Sportswear department. Eastern, Central, or Pacific time, Mother's Day is an important time. Remember mom with a timely example of sophisticated design. A Seiko watch from Sears. Seiko has a reputation you can count on in styles that range from sporty with leather wristbands to elegant bracelet watches in white or yellow gold color cases. Choose mom's precision-made Seiko with 17 jewel or quartz movements from Sears. But hurry, Mother's Day is coming May 13th. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Milwaukee Deep was written by Percy Granger, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were Barney Phillips and Tyler McVeigh. Featured in the cast were Marvin Miller, Don Diamond, and Dawes Butler. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Joanne Thompson is production supervisor, and the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Join hands with people everywhere. Each of us can do our share in cares per se for children. This year, people of all nations are joining hands to improve the lives of the world's needy children. Through care, you can provide the families of these children with the means to grow their own food, to build medical facilities, safer water systems, and schools. Tomorrow's world is in our hands. Help make it a better place for all the children.
Please send your check or money order to CARE, Crusade for Children Overseas, Box 576, New York 10016. I gained 20 pounds in two months. Chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah, I never lost that weight either. Uh, with me, it was different. I was climbing the walls, yelling at the kids. I just couldn't live with myself. Mm, neither could Dan, could he? <laughs> no, not really. He said having a wife that smoked was better than being terrorized day and night. Huh, better a friendly dragon than a nasty dragon, huh? Right. So anyway, I'm back to a pack and a half a day, addicted just like I was Let's before. hold it right there. The American Heart Association wants you to know that smoking cigarettes becomes a habit not an addiction. Habits can be broken. Smoking is a matter of choice, not destiny. We can help you quit. You don't have to gain weight or climb the walls. Contact your American Heart Association for a free booklet that explains how to break your cigarette habit step by step. The American Heart Association wants you to know we're fighting for your life. Next Monday, Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. I tried to tell him why I quit football, but he wouldn't listen. Your father will listen in the morning when you two put the feet out. He always does. Ma, this time's different. I let him down in front of everybody at the stock show. That ain't something you forget like yesterday's rain. So be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater.